events now and pull it up. There you go. You're live. All right, everybody. I'm live. I mean, I'm just like, yeah. It's funny how like you're live and then like there's no one here. You have to like let people trickle in. So you have to wait for it. And then when they go and watch the replay, they're like, "This is boring." <laughs> so talk about not being able to grab an audience. Um, live streaming. All right, guys. So we're getting this thing set up. So if you're just getting here, um, we're gonna get this thing going right now. We're just getting all the little fine tuning thingies all up and ready to go. Um, I should get right here. Mute that. See if we get a chat. Uh, remind me tomorrow. If there's seven people in. All right, there's seven people in. That's enough people to make uh, cure world peace. I mean, or you know, solve world hunger or something like that. So, all right. Um, who do you got here? Hey, it's my little brother, Brayden. <laughs> my brother is like 13. I don't know. He's like 10. Yeah, he's 10. Yeah. Time's flying. All right. Oh, dude, we got 14 in here. Oh, we got no front breaks. How are you doing, no front breaks? <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> All right. Let me see if I can see you on here. Uh, let me get you back over here so I can see you. And then we'll be set. Now you're now you're now you're gonna cry. My little dog now is gonna start crying. All right. All right. No front breaks. Um, real quick, I'm chatting with No Front Breaks today, guys. So we're gonna be doing a live chat on mountain bike gear, and like you know, we're gonna talk about what our favorite gear is. You know, whether it be whether it be because it's on it's a, some budget, you know, we got it cheap, or basically we've tried many different things, and we ended up choosing this or product or that product due to the fact that it actually works as opposed to not work. So we're gonna be doing a little discussion on that. But um, real quick, no from um, Eric with no from Rex is here. If you do not have not seen his channel, um, go check it out. His channel is awesome. Um, he's here in Texas with me. And um, Eric, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Yeah. Uh, so my channel is about riding with a prosthetic arm, which I actually don't have in the room here as an essential piece of gear that I need. <laughs> uh, but I ride a mountain bike with a prosthetic arm travel around um, here in Texas, but I go to New Mexico and Colorado and I've been in North Carolina. So it's all about pushing yourself to the limit and trying new things. Where do you, uh, do you have any goals for your channel? Like things you want to like, you know, people like want to watch in anticipation? Uh, yeah, I just want to keep, keep doing my thing. Keep uh, traveling to new areas. Um, keep pushing myself. I race Enduros here. Uh, and I'd like to keep doing that. Uh, maybe go up, head up to Arkansas and race some next spring. Um, but we, we have a couple here locally. Uh, other than that, just keep growing and spreading a message of, you know, you can do anything that you want to, anything you set your mind to. Um, yeah, I mean, um, that's, that's what I like about your channel. Um, I feel like when I heard that you had one arm, you know, obviously you're thinking, how does that even work? I still watch your videos sometimes and I'm like, how does that feel? Like, and then you all see you like hit like a technical section or you'll go down something. I'm like, couldn't even imagine. Like you just, is, I was, I wanted to ask you, like, do you feel like, like it's like become part of you now? You know what I mean? Like, you know, the prosthetic in a way with riding that you've learned to like maneuver up here and able to make it happen. Do you feel like it's just second like nature or how does it feel? Yeah, I don't think about it too much anymore, honestly. Um, it, I mean, the my prosthetic was designed to be so that my body is symmetrical when I ride. My elbows can be at the same spot, and my, you know, so my arms are the same length when I have it on. Um, and so I don't, I don't really think about it on long rides though, or like long days at a bike park. Uh, my arm, the end of my arm, will get a little sore. Uh, but there's all kinds of different things that I do to make sure that I'm not like really getting hurt. Dude, yeah, that's crazy, man. I mean, it's like, I don't know. It's like anything. We were, we're creatures and we learn to adapt well, but man, that's pretty awesome. And I think we were talking before how like, you know, just spreading the message of don't let, you know, because somebody could easily have told you, dude, you'll never ride a mountain bike. You know what I mean? You can't do that. You know, and you just go out there and figure out a way to do it. You know, that's just kind of, uh, it's inspiring. So that's really cool, man. So go check his channel out. Um, so before we get to the topic tonight, I just want to let you guys know, if you have not checked out Patreon, go check out Patreon. 
we got stickers. So go sign up. This is how you get the stickers. I got a, I got a few types of stickers. You know, I got like other ones in these, but though they were like a surprise. So I don't want to like give it away and stuff like that. So if you have not done that, go check out Patreon, get some stickers and uh, be a fun time. Um, other than that, also just want to just do a shout out to Worldwide Soccer I'm an affiliate, so it helps out the channel a lot. You go and click those links. So, you know, it's awesome. So it helps out the channel a ton so we can go travel, so we can do bike upgrades. I actually got a really awesome upgrade I'm going to be doing to this bike pretty soon. So, um, yeah, you know, just cool stuff to bring you guys, more content and all that. Um, all right, where are we at with uh, – Guess I'll sleep later. Guess I'll sleep later. Yeah. I mean, you sound like you need some sleep because you said I'll sleep later. Later. Ah. All right. There you go. Okay. So what's going on, Missy Link MTV? All right. So let's get to it, man. So what kind of mountain bike gear? Or let me start out this way. Let's start out with, I guess. So when I got into mountain bike riding, you know, I didn't know what gear to use. I didn't know what was what worked, you know, so like everybody else, I use YouTube. And once I use YouTube, I, you know, I bought the products because I saw other people using them. And then over time, some of the products were good. Some of the products, not so good. And I really wish I never got them at all. And um, I'm kind of getting to the place now where I'm like learning to like figure out what works good for me and um, not necessarily what works for um, Brian Kenny from BKXC or worked for me, you know, or different build, different needs and stuff like that. So I'm kind of now coming into my own and what I like for myself. So um, I just wanted to share some of those things with you guys. And, but first, I, what do you think, um, Eric? I, I was thinking maybe starting from like head to toe, you know what I mean? You know, yeah, I'm down. About, you know what I mean? Just going down. So, okay. So let's first talk about helmets. So Eric, Talk to us about the helmet you use, why you chose that helmet, and if you tried other helmets, do they suck, and sure. why do they suck, and why do you go and what you got with right now? Yeah, I started out with uh, just like a basic specialized helmet, um, and I wore that for like three years, four years, uh, and then I switched recently, actually about a year ago, I switched to, uh, for like half shell or whatever, to the Smith Rover. So that's one of my go-to. Uh, I'm actually on, this is the second one. The first one I got in a bad wreck and cracked it. So so for non-full face, this is my go-to helmet. Uh, Smith Rover or Smith Forf Forefront is their other model that I like a lot. Uh, for full face, I gotta go with the Cali company, or uh, California company, Cali Protective. So uh, this is the Cali Shiva 2.0. And uh, that's my full face for bike park. What about you? Cool. Well, before I talk about me, I want to know what you think of the Smith because I really like. I've always liked the way the Smith looked. I think they were they were a little on the pricey side. Am I am I wrong? They're like two hundred dollars, are they? Uh, I think yeah. I think the Rover is like one sixty. Um, I always get Mips helmets. Uh, from, you know, the, both, both of my Smith. Okay. So like my first Smith Rover, I was, uh, in like a little, uh, bike park run in Colorado Springs and I overshot a table, I hucked it to flat and I came down hard in this like gravelly section out in the flat and I just slammed my head on the ground and then it, and it like the side of the helmet, it was like, is like cracked, cracked, like the plastic, the foam. And uh, I walked away from it fine. So I'm a, I'm a pretty big believer in MIPS. Um, I, you know, I was talking to somebody about MIPS the other day and they were like, does it work good? I'm like, dude, I don't know. All I know is that MIPS is way more comfortable than yeah. no MIPS. The yeah. Comfort alone is just the biggest thing. I mean, I haven't crashed yet to test it. So yeah. I'm comfort, you got the crash. Sounds like a winner. <laughs> <laughs> well, the other thing that I that I like about the Smith helmet, actually, I mean, the full face is great. The full face feels fine. Uh, I wear an XL when it comes to full face. Um, that's one thing to keep in mind with full face is always size up. Like if you wear a large helmet, when you get a full face, get an XL or else like like your cheeks will be <laughs> like this in the helmet. Uh, but with the what I noticed about the the Smith Rover is on my very first helmet, the the specialized helmet, uh, the pads are on those like little Velcro things. And as you're riding, like as you wear those pads, 
all of a sudden I'll have like a, a brush burn on my forehead from where the Velcro, the rough part of the Velcro is like brushing against my forehead or on the side of my head near my ears. But what I've noticed with the MIPS helmet is because that rotates around a little bit, I don't get that. I don't get any rubbing from any of the pads that sit there. Yeah, I mean, it's funny you say that because I like, for me, I like it. I like my head to be squeezed. I don't know why, you know, um, I like it to be a little bit better. And I, I don't know. So um, I think, you know, maybe head build has something to do with it too. Uh, but um, yeah, I like, I like, but I grew up uh, dirt bike riding. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, I was used to the, the squish, I guess you could Yeah. So I don't know, that's me. But no, that's, no, that's good. Uh, good info because um, I wouldn't think to look for a size up at all, you know, so that's a, a lot of people probably find that very useful. Um, okay. So me, um, I got, uh, I got the bell. Um, dude, I don't even know what model this is, but it has MIPS. So if you guys don't know what MIPS are, it's this little like yellow thing with cool little comfortable pads. And the theory is, is that, it allows the uh, helmet to shift, like if you were gonna wreck, you know, or something like that, this would shift, providing like extra like, safety for your spine somehow. I guess I get it, I guess I don't sometimes, but you know. Um, but yeah, so I'll leave that to the experts or the GMBN to kind of like, you know, talk about that. Also, um, Alvin, you wanted me to say hi to your son. So hi, Kaden, how you doing, buddy? All right, um, <laughs> just didn't mean to make that quick, but I wanted to do that. Um, okay, so I can't remember what bell this is, but it's pretty their standard bell helmet. It actually has the uh, – you can actually buy a face to, that goes to here. Like it, it would – the face would go around here, and it would look like a dirt bike helmet or whatever, but it's a mountain bike helmet, and it would plug into right here. So it's whatever bell helmet that that is. The reason why I got this one is because um, GMBN – They I saw some guys on GMBN, and I'm like, well, that looks like a good helmet, and I – um, found one for a good deal and I got it for like 90 bucks with MIPS. Like, I mean, I don't, I think I couldn't get another helmet that, you know, was going to be that good a deal at that time. I, I'm an eBay like shark. I, I find deals on eBay and I got really lucky on this one. Um, but to be honest, I've gotten in many crashes with this. I've, you know, like, look at it. Like these are all not just from like, you know, just wear. no, these are all from crashes. I literally, and this one right here was when I, I went, fell onto my head and then separated my AC. <laughs> so, um, and I know they say you're supposed to throw away your helmet after one crash. Um, I'm not going to do that. Just, that's just me, you know? Um, well, you should, you should reach out to Bell because a lot of companies actually will, will like, so like Cali has a crash replacement program. Smith has something like that. I don't know if they give it like a percentage off, but you can basically like, get the, cause all these companies want you to be safe. That's why they're in yeah. making safety equipment. And I know Cali, if I would like really mess up that helmet, I could send it back and they would send me a new one. Yeah. So. I don't think they would see. That's the thing. I didn't know if they, I'll, I'll call and ask and see what they say, but honestly, there's no dance, nothing like that. It's just all super yeah. visual, like scratching. So I guess that's why I didn't figure that they would like replace anything. Cause yeah, if there was like a dent or something obviously broken, I'd be like, okay, maybe the integrity somehow is messed up, but there's no dents. There's nothing. There's the, the, as far as structure is concerned, it's completely good. It's just the scratching, but no, I should, you know, just ask them to see what they say. Um, yeah. Yeah. That might be a good idea. I get have, have you ridden, have you worn that helmet with the chin bar on? I have not ridden it with the chin bar on. I have not. Have you? No, no. I see a lot of people that race enduro will like wear, wear that with the chin bar on it. Yeah, I've heard that um, the chin bar is uh, – people really like it. It's light. It's a super light helmet. I really like it. Um, a lot of the MTB helmets are pretty light, but this one I think is a little bit more, like, light for the girth of it. But, yeah, the thing, thing fits great. So this is how it looks on me. Mm -hmm. I look dashing. So. <laughs> um, all right. So what's, ne what's next? What, what, we're going head down. Should Eyewear. I wear. Yeah, I've never you ever worn those little like brace things that the hardcore people at like uh, freaking Rampage wear. <laughs> I don't. Uh, I think they're those are like neck protectors. I think it's supposed to keep your head from like wobbling this way, right? It's yeah. supposed to keep your head from, you know, getting a concussion, having your like brain rattle from 
So yeah, there's that. I don't know if it has anything to do with collarbones either. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't know if it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know much about it. I mean, I don't see. I've never seen anyone wear one. It's pretty much for like you know, if you're a rampage guy, wear it. I don't know. I've um, seen people on bike parks wear them. Oh, okay. That's cool. about it. I, I yeah, I need to. Uh, yeah, even at the snow summit or any bike park I've ever been to, you've never seen one yet. Um, Bless low profile under t-shirt. <laughs> um, okay, so um, t-shirt, man. So I mean, I, I don't know. Well, what do you do with? Um, I don't know. What do you do? You wear a normal T-shirt? You know? Do you no. have? No. No, I wear. So I've been wearing a lot of like the kind, the kind jerseys. They're really comfy. I have a couple Fox jerseys that I really like. Um, I used to wear like tech tees, like that, like blend fabric that's supposed to be kind of like your like Under Armour type. The Fox makes them, and a lot of the other companies. Uh, but I switched to wearing actual jerseys and I just find that they breathe better. So for me, like I've, I, I, yes, they, I definitely could say they breathe better. Um, I've had issues with, cause I, cause they're expensive shirts. And one of the, my frustrations with them, when I buy a shirt, that's like 30 to $50, you know, and they're usually on more close to $50. Um, I'll wear them and I'll wear my backpack and I'll put on my backpack and I'll notice my backpack starts just after one ride or two starts wearing some of the material down. And I'm like, I know it breathes better, but I, I don't know. You just want it to last a little bit, you know? And, and those are like the Fox shirts and stuff like that, that I've mm -hmm. noticed. And the only time I've ever bought like uh, shirts for like jerseys, um, I have two Fox. I have a long sleeve one and I have a, uh, so I have the long sleeve and I have the short sleeve. And so I got two of them for, you know, when, whatever weather. And I, I just, I got them really on a budget. Um, if you guys are really looking for like budget stuff, like Fox, like the Fox stores in the mall was like every now and then go and check to see if they're doing their like blowout 50% deal. Cause they will literally sell their stuff for like 50% off. Sometimes they don't ever tell you when they do it. It's always a surprise, but that's one of the things that I found like budget wise you guys can do is Fox is always like, you know, doing, some really cool budget stuff like when you have like a mall outlet store and stuff and i got i literally got both the shirts i think for i think it was like twenty dollars each you know and they're like fifty dollar shirts like they're unreal like and they're really nice so i mean at that point i didn't really care about messing them up because it was a good deal um the other thing is uh as far as shirts um where is my shirt um i have a really nice fox jacket do you wear any jackets uh no i have like a a marmot windbreaker that I wear if it's like chilly out, but I don't really have, I mean, in Texas, I mean, you know, by now it's like stupid hot all the time. So <laughs> I, I do have long sleeve jerseys that I wear in the winter time. Uh, but I don't think it's like, I I've always been of the mind that less is more when you're riding, even in the winter around here, because you're going to want to shed layers like five minutes into your ride anyway. And I'd rather be cold at the beginning of the ride than to be like, Oh, well now I have, you know, I have to keep a jacket or another layer in my backpack or in my lumbar pack because I started out with it. I liked, I wanted to get a jacket. Well, one, I was in California at the time. So there was a lot of reasons for a jacket or just, you know, uh, you know, but it, it's a really nice NCB jacket, breathes well, everything. And I find that they're way more durable. Like I put it on with the backpack. The material doesn't fray. The jacket, I think, was like $120. But because of the 50% off deal at Fox, I got it for like 60 bucks. So um, I was, you know, that's I kind of got the shirts and the jacket at the same time. And I love that jacket. The jacket still looks pristine. I've had it for like almost a year now. And it's like one of those where it zips up and you kind of have that like collar that goes around here. And you like look like you're like an experience. I don't know. Whenever I've seen like really like experienced mountain bikers who are really invested in the sport, they seem to always have those really nice like jackets. Mm -hmm. And it just goes with everything, you know. And I, I really like it. It has a lot of, they have a lot of style points and stuff like that. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah, because they also have some other jackets that are a lot thinner and they don't look as cool and they just, you know, flare like they have the normal collars. They don't have like that mm -hmm. almost neck collar that goes up around here. Uh, I don't know. I can't really describe it. I have it around here somewhere. I had, it's probably my other room, but I don't feel like going up and get it at this point in Russian. Um, so, um, yeah, so that's how so that's how I feel about jackets. I like them. Um, and, I, and you kind of uh, – maybe in, te and in Texas, you know, I think it may come into handy because some of this cold weather is coming in and around right now and I, I totally hear you though I mean having that other layer 
to carry around. It's definitely yeah, usually just a windbreaker here. Honestly, uh, I know. Well, again, the kind, the kind is awesome. I, I love them, and they have like uh, some pretty light jackets that are like windbreaker, and they have hoods, but the hoods big enough that it fits over your helmet if you wanna oh, okay. pop it up over. Which I always think is cool. I always see like, um, you 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 know Dusty Betty. Her husband Steve, yeah. he always wears a hoodie up over his helmet. It's uh, a cool look. Yeah, I, I, I have seen that guy. That's funny. I've seen some pictures of him on Instagram, I think, with that. Um, so, all right, yeah. So that's how I feel about jackets. Now, pants. Wait, is there anything before pants? Is there any MTB belts? I don't think there's MTB belts. Dude, we should talk about eyewear, goggles, sunglasses, all that Dude, stuff. Dude, I totally – okay, yeah. You take away eyewear. Start it right now because I right. can't really get mine. All right, I'll uh. So I I wear Smith goggles. They're pretty basic. I think they're pretty inexpensive. Talk about goggles on a budget. I think they were like, I don't know. I want to say like thirty bucks. Uh, I don't know the exact model. All my stuff that I have in here is like super muddy. Uh, but they're really nice, and they can't. It, they have those like uh, pop out lenses. There's a clear version. So really like those. And then as far as sunglasses. These are the ugliest but coolest sunglasses, and uh, I, I stole this I, this brand from RC from Outdoor Gold, Pit Vipers. Dude. I really hate I really hate sunglasses that don't cover your face and let mud get up underneath them. And uh, that happened to me in Colorado, and RC had these and recommended them, and I love them. They're awesome, and they're polarized too. So, and honestly, I have to say they look really you. Like, <laughs> like you pull those, like not many people can pull those off. Like if I put those on, it would look ridiculous, but you look like awesome with those. So. I feel like I need a mustache whenever I wear these. <laughs> no, man, those look cool. I like them. Um, so yeah, goggles. I've never worn goggles. I've worn goggles dirt bike riding because of so much more air dirt kick up or whatever. Um, but yeah, I have not found my sunglasses yet that I am like, yes, sold on. However, I just thought it was really funny. Because I've actually been really enjoying Ray Bans on the trail. So, do those stay on your face pretty well, dude? I haven't had any problems. That's why I was just really surprised. I did some pretty like technical trails and all that, and so I I did um, when I went to California. I got video of it, but I mean, mm -hmm. uh, it's not gonna come out for like maybe a month or, from now. So, um, but um, we, we we did Aliso Viejo, and no joke, they were the longest, steepest, most technical trails I've ever done, ever. And I mean, like steep, like this, and you're doing some like crazy technical stuff, like the likes of which I have never done. And I was just completely blown away by that place because I had ridden in Aliso Viejo before, but I had went with a guy who was not as like skilled in riding, but I kind of went with guys who were, and they took me through to all the Black Diamond like trails, and they were crazy they're like oh like they, the trails are probably some of them are probably double black they were very insane but i wore these my point being i wore these the entire time and i didn't have a problem you know so that i think that kind of blew me away the fact that you know ray-bans you know fit so well in that sense and came so so much in handy um but uh yeah man yeah, that, that, i'm so glad you like remember that because i totally skipped out on that one um by the way here is that fox jacket um, and what I mean, it, it kind of uh, it zips up all the way to here. Um, you, it has oh, it's a, like a track jacket. Yeah, and it has this like back pocket right here, kind of pretty cool. It's just a really stylish looking like MTB jacket, like, uh, and it says like Fox like right here. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but yeah, this is considered the it's called the Fox Attack, and I wear a medium, and I'm pretty skinny too. So I mean, and I'm only five six, so medium or 12 for me. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's what I wear there. So what's oh, that? I have that? another pro tip for you now that you're in Texas, this, this thing. And I think Cobra Kyle knows what it is. It's called a halo sweatband. Okay. So in the summer, notice how there's like a stripe on here. This is like a rubber mm -hmm. and it's like a rain gutter for your forehead. So what you do is when you, when you wear this thing, this thing, sits down low and it keeps sweat from going in your eyes so here you just wear it kind of like uh under your helmet just like this and it keeps the sweat from going in your eyes it's pretty awesome 
Oh my gosh, dude, that's crazy because it is freaking humid as hell out here. So, I mean, I used to never sweat really, or if I did, it wasn't that bad. But out here, you're going to sweat no matter what. So, I yeah. mean, that, that's awesome, dude. What, so, that's just like one of those running bands or what are they? Uh, it's called a halo band. They have different widths, but this is like a real, this is their narrow one, but this is like a rubber on under underneath. And so like, I don't know about you, but like when you, especially when you're wearing your camera on your chest, like that, the lens will just get covered in sweat and then you lose a bunch of footage because halfway down the mountain, you got like a big water droplet right in the middle of your lens and it's from your own forehead. So with these on that kind of saves your lens because it basically like routes the sweat off of your forehead down down on the sides that's it's genius yeah. yeah that is genius and i'm gonna have to get one because i've so far been lucky and i haven't never got sweat on my lens so when that happens that's the day i'm gonna be pissed off dude like really <laughs> like that's gonna suck like i don't know I, I i've us editors when we like oh my gosh i can't wait till we get i see this part again and you know of the trail and get to edit it and then there's like some sweat on there mm -hmm. I, I, I think something like that happened recently where I was mega. Oh, yeah, where I was chewing gum in my dad's video. <laughs> uh, did you hear about that? How literally there was like 300 comments about gum. Oh, man. So in my dad's video, when we went to pick up his new bike, everyone's like, I was waiting for this video. And all I can hear is you chewing gum like a horse. Gum, 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 gum. And I'm just like. I was more mad about it than any of you guys are. So, and I'm the one who sat there editing it for hours trying to make it better. So it's just, yeah, that, that was, that was like my worst foobar ever. Um, I don't know why I'm talking about it now. Totally off topic. So let's get back to the next. Oh wait, before we go anywhere, um, I was going to go to pants, but we got to talk about backpacks now. So mm -hmm. what, what do you do for backpacks? Uh, I forget the name of the back. So I have a, a Camelback backpack that all or like, you know, like the full back one that I'll wear for some rides if it's like a really long ride. Uh, but for most of my rides, I have a Camelback Palos uh, lumbar pack. It's like really like bro-y enduro to wear a lumbar pack. But man, I, I love it, especially like in the summertime here. You don't have like your back isn't soaked at the end of a ride. It's awesome. That's cool. Um, do you have it with you or no? uh it's in the garage it's like incredibly muddy okay so it's incredibly know. muddy backpack <laughs> yeah. all right so i'll show you mine so i am if i was a woman i would be a purse i'd be in love with purses like so i'm a man and i'm in love with backpacks even before like mountain bike riding and all that i was part of me was just excited to get into mountain bike riding because i can get more bags now like i love bags for some reason so bags are very important to me um so when i first started out went to walmart and i found like a swiss army you know backpack with a bladder in it whatever it was like 30 bucks um so that was a cool little budget tip for you guys if you guys need a little like budget backpack that's good swiss army makes a cool budget little blue backpack at walmart it's like 30 bucks or less um and it has a bladder so then after that I got my first real mountain bike backpack. It's the Fox Oasis six liter um, bladder pack. So I like this one because it was really compact, like like really small. Like if you look, like you know what I mean. Like this is not a big backpack at all. Um, it comes with like you put your like you know you put your tools and stuff down here. Um, I got my you know multi tool right here, my Topeak, and um, and then you can put your sunglasses up here. It's really well ventilated back here. So you can get all that, you know, hopefully not sweat as much. Um, and then your bladder goes back in here and you have a few pockets and stuff like that in here. So um, I'm gonna put as much, much as I can links, you know, they're not, the links are gonna be in there immediately, but um, hopefully by tomorrow, I will have all the links to most of this gear that we talk about here in the video but yeah so um yeah this is was a really cool one um but the problem with this thing though is i needed something bigger um you know as you know being a camera person and having camera gear and stuff like that this wasn't really doing it for me i couldn't carry a spare gimbal or anything like that and i could carry spare batteries and stuff so i was like dude i'm gonna need to go to something a little bit different so from there i went 
to the Osprey backpack because Brian Kennedy uses it. And the dude travels everywhere and he has camera gear up to Wazoo. So why not go for the Osprey backpack? So I went for the Osprey. This one opened up a lot more room. It actually has pockets on the wraparound so you can put stuff there. It has uh, your glasses thing up here. It's not really soft. Um, you have a place to put like like your helmet if you need to in here, like a, like a, what do you call it? A, like a jacket or like I put like, sometimes I put my gim my extra gimbal here and I'll like mm -hmm. tie it down. And in here you have like an extra like pack right here. You can just put whatever the crap you want in there. And this thing just is, it's pretty insane how much you can actually fit in this thing. And it's as small as it is. Um, I'm going to probably be gravitating away from this pretty soon and getting, I want to start exploring different gear now. So I was thinking like, I, I, I know like, you know, we want, we tend to like get the latest and greatest thing sometimes, or, you know, like if Brian's wearing this or if Seth's wearing this, you kind of go for it. I'm like, man, there's a lot of good backpacks out there. And, you know, I'm, I want to start maybe exploring to find my own backpack that's like perfect for me. Cause the things that I don't really like about this one, it feels kind of flimsy a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, it's not as rugged as I would like. And honestly, I kind of, I don't know. I just, I want something that has is a little bit even as versatile as this is i want i feel like i want something more so i'm going to be looking for something else pretty soon but to tell you the truth guys um one of my favorite things about this backpack is that it comes with this uh like tool pouch thing at the bottom over here and i don't know osprey is going to be pretty hard to beat i may not be able to beat osprey as far as i know this is like one of the best backpacks i've ever had or owned so um but yeah i have my pump here i have my levers here um, I have my multi-tool in here, tire levers, and I have, oh, if you guys know how to get your hands on some of this stuff, um, it's kind of sometimes hard to get your hands on, but it's like surgical glue. And if you know somebody in the medical field that maybe they can just grab some for you, they, uh, I, my stepmom's in the medical field and she works at the doctor's office and gives me tons of surgical glue. I've done this to my shins many times after busting them on a pedal. So and it really does save your ride. So, uh, yes, yeah, safety glue. Um, just so you know, I'm not a doctor. I'm nothing like that. So everything you do from my information on this channel is at your own risk, and I have no responsibility for. <laughs> so so jo Josh, daily MTB rider, brought up that he, he he goes he likes to go packless, and I want like I just need I have all these things. I have batteries. I have like a multi tool. I have like all the stuff that I need. So we're like, I, I'm always curious. Like I know people go out and they just like chug a bunch of water and then go ride and they're good to go. Oh, he said that as well. But yeah, it, I always wonder like, how do you keep all your things? And also confession, never have I ever washed out the <laughs> bladder from any of my camelbacks. And that, I'm sure that sounds disgusting, but I have never gotten a really gross mildewy taste or anything. So I haven't had to. But they're talking in chat about uh, apple cider vinegar, and so that uh, plus one for that—that that is the way to clean it out, because that way you're not dealing with any sort of chemicals or anything. And uh, also, you, well, I've done—I've done the so like you're you're a dad. Uh, kids have accidents, and that's like the one thing that you use for kids' clothes when they have accidents is you use uh, like uh, vinegar on the clothes and it gets it out. So I've, I know people use that on other things, especially that they're like like a bladder where it's enclosed. So that way you don't have like, you don't have to worry about bleach. You don't have to worry about like soap suds or anything like that. No, that's a good, I didn't even think about that. I don't wash my daughter's stuff with apple cider vinegar. I've washed dog pee out of a carpet with apple mm -hmm. cider vinegar, but never, never that. But no, it's a good point. Um, I've never washed mine either. Um, I've, I've sometimes rinsed it out and mm -hmm. tried to wash it out, but I never really washed it and it never really got rid of anything. So, um, I ended up, yeah, that's, that's just kind of the, that's yeah, hard. You know, that's, I, I get frustrated cause I do sometimes can tell a difference in the taste of mine and it's kind of gross. Um, but I mean, water is better than no water sometimes, but yeah, I'm trying to keep, I got a new bladder, so I'm trying to keep it a little bit more clean now. Mm -hmm. So it's funny you bring that up. Um, but, um, other than that, uh, what do you call it? Uh, but yeah, so that's, yeah, that, I mean, oh, that's the, yeah, okay, so a lot of people, yes, will go, like, 
you like oh they don't need a backpack they don't want to wear a backpack I, I have to confess like in my local trails in uh you know in california i stopped wearing a pack actually when i would ride i would i would literally this was what i did i would down an entire iced coffee i would show up to um i get ready down one bottle of water and i would hit the trails and i'd be good by the time i got back you know but the thing is for us we film you know we're mm -hmm. gonna go and we're gonna go fly places we're gonna go you know explore places we never know what we're gonna get into and that's what's cool that's what's cool about all mountain bikers is that you're all going to be part of being a mountain biker and part of being you know why the sport's so awesome is the exploring factor and seeing new things so you can go to your local trails and do no water bottle or nothing like that but i guarantee none of you guys are going to go no nothing on a trail that you've never been on and it's probably miles and miles long, you know. So, and that type of thing. Yeah, not to mention you'll you're, you you always want to have either a pump or CO two or something like that. Definitely. And also, when I started wearing two, because um, sometimes I would just want to go really light, but I did want to bring you know my backpack or I mean did want to bring a couple things. I would use this guy right here, and this is literally like ten or fifteen dollars at Walmart. I think this was actually 10 and it comes with two water bottles right here and like awesome like super cool so this is something that um i think biking with bobo has a really nice one now done by osprey or oasis or oh yeah, yeah um so he's using that now um there's so they're coming out with some really high-end quality ones and it'll be something that i eventually probably get in the future if i have extra money or you know can do that because this is a really cool alternative that's why i think like a mountain biker should have one backpack. Like you should have at least two or three for different types of occasions per se. That's just me. My, my, uh, my Camelback Palos is that is, is a, like a lumbar pack style and it has a 1.5 liter, uh, bladder in it. So that's, that's nice. That's plenty of water and it has plenty of space for all the things that I need for all my batteries, all my tools, we'll keep a design, uh, collapsible pump in there. So you can jam a ton of stuff in there. No, yeah, they're they they they're really good. I've and they have a, yeah. There's a honestly, the only thing that I can't for my that I was not able to jam in here was like like say like my spare gimbal or something like that. For the general person, something like this, you're gonna you know maybe not this one, but other ones that the companies are making like Osprey and stuff like that. I think it's like the Osprey Falcon or something like that. They, they they're they're great. And uh, they, they hold a lot, you know, so I can't wait to actually try one of the higher end ones. I've never got a chance to do it yet. So um, that's and yeah, you say they have a bladder, too. So that's just yes. That's, uh, now, what's next? So, uh, well, I saw Maximos earlier was asking about body armor, and I actually don't have any experience with wearing any body armor. I don't know if you have. Oh, I do. I sent it back the next day. Oh, yeah. Why is that? Um, okay, so I literally, I actually have a video on it where I was like, because I separated my AC and I was, and then I broke my rib and it was like, okay, I can't do this anymore. You know, it was like within a couple months. And um, I was like, I started looking at it. I felt the Fox body armor looked very profile, low profile. I'm like, you know what? This look, and it looked really cool. And I was, look, I was uh, actually, I was watching Rampage and I can't remember which guy he was wearing it. I'm like, man, that guy looks legit in that. So I just thought it looked cool. And, but when I put it on, it just took some of the freedom and like love that I have for writing and what I get from it. It just felt too much. I just lost, there was just a fun factor that went away from wearing it because it felt restricting a little bit. Mm -hmm. It felt, um, it just felt a little over the top, you know? And I just, I, I'm like, it's not comfortable. I don't like it. I, I, you know, I'm just not going to do it. So I, I literally sent it back, um, like the next day and I, I was, I just did not like it. Um, I don't, I don't want, like I said, I, it's like one of those things. I don't really think there's a really big purpose for it unless you're going to be, you know, rampaging it or something like that, you know, doing something really crazy. Um, the older I get, the more I think that maybe I should try it. Mm -hmm. Cause I'll be, uh, I'm 38, so I'll be 40 in two years and I don't bounce back as quick as I used to. So I think I, I'll try it at some point. I just haven't had to yet. Um, 
I think the other thing that would be nice about wearing like the full body armor is uh, I don't if you ever go like over the bars and you like roll on your back and you get those like gross like strawberries, the brush burns, like road rash on your back. Yeah, man, that 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 would be great to avoid avoid that. I, I hear you. All, all injuries would be great to avoid. You know, I, I guess it was just it, a part of me too was wondering if it would really save me. You know, um, I'm sure it would in some ways. You know, but um, I don't know. I, I can't really describe it. I think someone's just gonna have to try it for themselves, and they're gonna have to see is this for them or not. You know, um, I think people who start out with them, you know, tend to not know a difference. You know, mm -hmm. they're just enjoying mountain bike riding. But if you've I honestly, I think I kind of felt like I felt less um, agile with it. Mm -hmm. So in well, some way, yeah, I think that's the same reason that people go packless is like the less stuff you have on you, the more playful you can be on your bike, the more agile you feel, the more the easier you can corner. You're not having to counterbalance all these things on your body. Do you know what I mean? Like you're not having to take that into account as you're riding. Exactly. It's really liberating to ride without all that stuff. So it really is. So, it really is very not as safe. Safe side, safe side of life. All right. So shorts, man. What's going on with the shorts? Oh your man, I've tried all different kinds of shorts. Um, I have some fox shorts that are like pretty. I think they're like race shorts, so they're they're not super baggy. Um, I have a bunch of Fox transfer, like cargo shorts that I like. Um, I have a pair of Yeti shorts that have like a little zipper pouch, uh, around the butt. Um, the one thing that I want to try is there are Yeti shorts that have, um, a bib in them and they have like a little slot to put a water bottle. So that would be really cool. If you're riding packless, you can just shove a water bottle back there. Mm -hmm. Um, or you can have, buy a new Yeti and put a water bottle in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can't fit a water bottle on my frame as it is now. But Me uh, <laughs> let's oh and I and Dekine again. I have some Dekine shorts that I really like too, and all their pockets zipper, which is pretty important because I wreck a lot. What about you? All right. So as far as pants, um, I found one pair of pants that I've only owned one pair of pants of mountain biking pants. Wait, no lie. No, it's true. And I've had no reasons to go to anything else. Um, I have these uh, Troy Lee Skyline race pants. Um, and uh, this is, they're, they're thick, they are rugged. They've been with, they have a hole in them even, you know, uh, right here. Uh, but these things, they look nice. They, I, I don't know. They just feel so dang good, man. And I, I, once I wore them, I was like, you know what? And they feel like, they feel like they're breathable, but they're not made cheap. And you, they're definitely like thick in good places to where you feel safe in them. You know, um, I've gone down on my butt, super scraped on rocks at five speeds, and I'm they're still being held together. Um, so these are the Troy Lee uh, Skyline race pants, and I these were a 32. Um, I'm a little skinnier now, as opposed to some of what these guys were saying. So probably get away with 30. But um, one of the cool things about this is the rear. You got a rear little pouch thing here. It's pretty nice. Put that there. Uh, you obviously got two pockets, um, and I think I think that's all that you get with this. Yeah. But dude, these are these are rad, and they have these like adjustable, like you know, for your size, you can kind of go make them a little bit tighter and stuff like that on both ends here uh, to kind of shorten the waist area. And there's Velcro here, and uh, oh my gosh, she's got to go, bro. There's smell. <laughs> have you ever worn like actual like pants, pants like long? long no, pants? I haven't. But I've. I'm a pants person. I'm not really a shorts person. It wasn't until I started mountain bike riding that I went with shorts. So I'm very interested to try pants. I have one pair. I don't think they're made specifically. I've got them off of like competitive competitive cyclists, aka backcountry. Uh, and I think they're actually just for hiking. Um, but they're like they have like an elastic around the ankles. Mm -hmm. They're kind of like joggers, but they're and they have like little 
I don't know, they're really breathable and uh, light. And I, I've ridden in them once uh, in Colorado and it was Thanksgiving time and they kept me warm. Uh, but I don't need them around here, so I'm shorts all the time. Oh. So um, what are your feelings on um, Lycra? Oh, I always, I always wear chamois shorts under my baggies, always. Um, what kind? Uh, I'll either wear the ones that came with Fox uh, shorts. I have a couple Dakine chamois at this point, and then I have some uh, just like random generic ones. But the I find that like you kind of get what you pay for with chamois. So like, yes, and when you, what, I, I got I don't know. I always say chamois. Uh, so like the cheaper you go on chamois, they like the quicker the pads wear out. And I, I like the pads to be like really heavy duty. Yeah, I noticed the same thing like with uh, I had Fox and then I went with like some like Berga or something like that. I don't know, but like, now it's like a B and they're like called Elite X's. So uh, I decided to show them off. This is what I got going right here. <laughs> Demonetize. <laughs> Demonetize. No, but they're they they got this like B thing right here, and uh, I don't know whatever logo that is. This is Elite Race, but these were like one hundred and twenty dollars, dude. Like, Jeez. they were like, I, I I was like, okay, I want more kids. I started reading some articles, and I was like, <laughs> and it was like scaring the crap out of me that if I want a mountain bike ride, I'm never gonna have kids again. And it was like, okay, I need to go out and get get me some like chamois stuff. So, yeah, so that's what I got on, man. Yeah. <laughs> These are pretty rad. I mean, I and they feel good. They the, the like the lycra actually will, uh, like like they say the fox ones. I can already tell how they've changed and how they've like they're just not as much support anymore. Yeah. So um, yeah, uh, I really you can tell a big difference when you get uh, yeah. some good stuff. And I also recommend just using like like a what's it's a certain type of soap. Um, and it's like that like that non. It's like a certain type of like light detergent where it's not super hmm. harsh on your stuff. I usually use that and I wash them in like the bathtub and then I hang. Oh yeah. So a I lot don't of people air dry theirs because when you run them through the dryer on like heat, it it wears out the padding quicker. Yeah. So washing it and washer dryer is gonna ruin them a little bit quicker. So if you want to get the longest longevity out of them, then yeah, um, definitely use like the bath or something or just yeah. with some light soap so yeah that's what i recommend with that but, do you uh, mess with the uh, chamois butter no i've never had an i've never had issues down there so i've been i've been pretty fine everybody talks about like uh, i've heard people talk about like uh, chafing and all these things yeah. i'm like <laughs> i don't know bro <laughs> that sucks yeah between my like the padded the padding and the saddle that i use the combination i've been fine i've never had a problem so, yeah, yeah, I've never, yeah, I've never even seen anything like that. I hope it doesn't come with any age either, because that would suck too. You know, <laughs> yeah, hemorrhoidal thing. Everybody experiences it at some age. Um, uh, okay, so pads. Do you wear elbow pads? I do not wear elbow pads. Somebody was just telling me I should wear some elbow pads, and I was like, Bro and by the way look at do i wear elbow pads absolutely not these are all permanent scarrings here like this is like all yeah i mean no i just i i love my arms my freedom i i can't do it unless i maybe get hurt really bad one day i'm never wearing elbow pads well i have a carbon fiber elbow like my prosthetic comes up to like here so i never have to worry about it over here and i just don't ever I mean, obviously, I should protect my investment with tattoos, right? And where, yeah, exactly. But I just, I haven't. Well, yeah, I was, I was just thinking about that the other day. When you are a mountain biker with tattoos, like, and you like get a scrape, like I do, like, does it take some of the ink out, or how does that work? I mean, it, it it'll lighten up, but it, it it's it usually stays pretty well. Like I'll, you can get like, uh, like if you like brush burn it, it'll be lighter wherever, whenever it heals up, but you can just go back and get it touched up. Got it. But getting tattooed over, over a scar like sucks. It hurts really bad. So <laughs> dude, that sucks, dude. Oh man, that, that'd be rough. 
Um, especially because you like pay for it to look cool, and you're like, oh, it's yeah. my little face on. Look yeah, that's why I have. I actually like haven't finished my legs yet because I am always getting like shinners and uh, like I ride flats, so I, the little like pegs on your flat pedals, those like little spikes. I always get little puncture wounds on my shins from them, but I haven't finished my legs for that reason. <laughs> Dude, that's a, that's so funny. It's a, it's the micro the mountain biker life. You know, her lives are little quirks. Um, so uh, knee pads, knee pads. So how do you feel about those? Um, I've only ever had one pair, uh, and I'm not that tied to them. Um, I have the race face digs. I think they're called. They're like the shell ones. Um, they're nice because I don't have to take off my shoes to slide them on. They have like three Velcro things. So, th and they're open back. So they're not, they breathe really well. Yeah. Um, I really want a pair of those Cali, uh, what are they called? Strikes. Mm -hmm. But they've been sold out for ever since Seth did that video on them. Yeah. I, I, I email them every now and then. I'm like, uh, the guy from Cali and I'm like, Hey, are the strikes back yet? Oh my gosh. Or they'll get us, uh, like, a they'll get some in, they'll be in and then they'll like disappear right away. So it's, I think it's hard for them to keep them in stock, but I, I really need to, I really want to try those because they have that like waffle. Uh, it's like a rubbery waffle mm. print on the knee and it keeps it. Uh, they're like breathable, but they're like low. Um, they protect against impact and they, I don't know. They look really nice and comfortable. Yeah. Um, now, these strikes are they those like supposable like really thin like easy to wear stuff that's supposed to like on impact stiffen up but they're low profile yeah yeah like i know uh i think robert biker has them seth wears them i don't know i don't know if brian or alex does but I've been, I've been oh uh joseph definitely wears them trail features okay yeah um, i've always wanted to try them i haven't got a chance to do them yet i've so what I did instead, because they are expensive, they they, they were pretty dang expensive. Um, I started out with the uh, what what is these brand? But these Fox ones, they just launch. Are those the launch? Yeah, I think there's these are the launch. They're just they're like literally like not much protection at all. But it's you know if you go down, it's gonna it's something. But the problem I was having with these is that every time I'd go down. The wall it would protect me against the first rock, but the second rock would drag it off and it would just get scraped up anyway. Mm -hmm. So after about three or four times of really injuring myself with these, I was like, forget these. And I ended up getting um, a pair of these guys. Um, these are the POC um, VPD joint air knee pads or whatever. These are actually brand freaking new. Dang, when, I purchased, when I purchased them from... Uh, uh, I forgot. I purchased them from somewhere. They said I went to the store to actually buy them. Well, a couple days later, they sent me a second pair hmm. on accident. So I was like, "Oh, was Jensen?" So I was like, "Dude, they must have made a mistake." And now I, I'm like, didn't live anywhere near Jensen, and that was like a hassle because I'm gonna have to go mail these things back. But luckily, I started riding with some guy about just a week later. I'm like, "Hey, dude." Um, Actually, next time I meet you here, I know you work at Jensen. Can I just give you the pads back? This is what happened. He's like, "Are you one of those nice guys that like are honest about things and like give it?" Like, I guess you said something like that. I'm like, "I don't know." I guess he's like, "Dude, just keep them." And I'm like, "Really, Brad?" So I got like two for the price of one. I just had to like share that story. That was pretty cool. So I actually got it. Jensen approved. Let me keep them. So, <laughs> um, so but no, these they started working. These work really well because they have this Velcro up here and you mm -hmm. tighten the top and um, and that kind of stops it from going to shove down like that. So are um, they a, are they a shell? Like can you knock on them or are they like you yeah, can't yeah. they're not really a shell though, but it's uh. that it's that good though. <laughs> it's that's why I liked them because it's not a shell. Yeah. Like, they are way more, you can tell whatever it is, is so much more protection than the Fox ones I had. So that's why I thought that these were like a good pick for me because I did not want a shell, but mm -hmm. I wanted something obviously way better. So for the thickness and the 
the, the extra thickness that you're getting with this and still the little movability you get with this is great. But these are a lot more restricting than those other ones. But yeah. the knee, protecting the knees is so important that I wasn't going to – it's not like my elbows. You know what can I mean? You, can you start a ride with them? Like I always start my rides with them like down near – like right at my ankles. And then I'll pull them up when I'm about to descend. I've thought about that, but just for me, my personal preferences, um, I've always tried to strengthen my climbing. I've, you know, in California, it's mad climbing. I'm like, no, I need to be able to climb with them. So it's just this all thing that I just never tried, but it's probably a good idea. I think, you know what? I think I did it in, uh, where was it? Uh, when we did, was it, we went to the desert somewhere in California and it was like, I don't know. It was like a 13 or 20 mile ride. Is that and the we, one you did with, it was like a bunch of like veterans. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then we almost, and we like almost died. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it was getting dark and this is like, no joke. I'm like, we were like trying to find our way out of this thing. It's dark. It's getting dark. And we know we got 10 miles left. And I'm, I look, I look to the rear of me and I see this big veteran dude almost looks like he wants to cry. And he was just, he was done. Like, and he, and I'm just like, and I, I had my knee pads down and everything. Cause we were just, I, water was out. We were like in survival mode and mm -hmm. me realizing like, I'm like the smallest one here. If an animal comes or like a mountain lion, they're coming after me first. <laughs> like, so I'm just like, <laughs> I'll be the first one to go. So, but no, that, that time during that ride, I literally did everything I could do. Cause it wasn't about mountain biking anymore. It was like getting home to my family. Like, mm -hmm. oh, gosh like um what's going on squeezer i had to do a shout out to trail uh weeks real quick man he started calling he's this guy like showed up one of my first subscribers like in my first like 10 20 videos he's always like what's up squeezer i'm like this guy being a jerk or whatever like what is it you know but he would always call me a squeezer because i guess he saw me pushing my brakes or whatever like a lot wow. so i thought he was like one of these super like cocky like dudes that just like you know, it was like super good, just rags on all those like people for not being awesome or whatever. But he's actually a pretty cool, humble guy. And he's, you know, he said, nah, dude, I'm not even that great of a writer, dude. I just, just messing with you. And he's like followed the channel the whole time. So I don't know. I just, what's going on, man? I just wanted to say what's up and tell a story how I met you for some reason because it felt like it. Feeling the love. Uh, but yeah, so that's my spiel on knee pads. What about uh, socks? <laughs> Okay, now that I live in Texas, I need to wear some high socks, bro. Because yep. I always wear low socks, and I'm like sitting there at work. I'm like this, and like, what's the matter? I'm like, dude, I got mosquito bites like everywhere. Yeah. I'm dying right now. Like, like everywhere. Like, like no joke. I got like mosquito bites for days. Like, yeah. it sucks. So the thing, it's, the thing that sucks about socks is that they're expensive. Mm. Like, like. If you get so like you can get a pair of shorts for like what 40 50 bucks wear them every ride and be fine or or like even like in your normal clothes you can wear buy a pair of jeans and wear them every day for a week straight and yeah. no one will know but you can't wear socks more than a day in a row right yeah and they're like uh, like seven at least seven bucks a pair i haven't found them anywhere for like less than seven bucks a pair yeah i know see that's the thing i i probably will just not wear them then. I mean, at least where I'm at right now. I mean, when I get better financially, then sure, maybe one day. Um, uh, Biking with Panda says get this stuff called Crocodile. Works really well on black flies and mosquitoes. I might do that. Um, no, but yeah, I, I think I'm going to venture. I got to, dude. Maybe I have to because my legs are killing me. Even as I sit here right now, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm reminded. Um, so, but no, I haven't tried it yet. That's one thing I haven't done. Um, the kind makes some really comfy socks. I have a bunch of bunch of them, a uh, bunch of uh, the kind pairs of socks. And then I usually just like get like those multi packs from like Target or somewhere. Mm -hmm. If you're doing it on a budget, baller on a budget, and that way you have like six pairs of socks, and they'll come up to like mid shin. Maybe save you from some pedal strikes. Definitely save you from bugs. Yeah, that's yeah. I probably uh, when I get money, I will. You know what I mean. Um, I just did a big purchase. Um, I bought a uh, SRAM Eagle drivetrain um, because my drivetrain is is shot. I'm done with it. I'm gonna do the GX drivetrain. You know, because mm -hmm. all I needed. I mean, 
like three, uh, you know, I was like, I didn't get the whole drive train. Like I have the cranks, you know what I mean? I have a cha oval chain ring that I'm going to be putting on. So I basically needed the four parts, you know, so mm -hmm. I'm going to be upgrading to that. And uh, yeah, so that's why I'm just like not feeling, I don't have no money, you know, that was like it. So, but I mean, I need to get socks, but Hey, I just realized we need to talk about gloves. We like skipped our hands. Oh yeah. So what do you, what do you, what are you rocking for gloves? Okay. So let me tell you, let me tell you how I go. So obviously I've talked about Fox and I think I, the reason why I've worn so many Fox stuff is, well, sometimes I was able to get it cheap. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because I have the outlet store back in California, but um, I always went with Fox too, even when it wasn't cheap because I used to ride dirt bikes. And to me, Fox is just, I mean, like to me, like Fox was just like the icon growing up. Like everything, if we had the cool stuff, you had Fox. So getting into mountain bike riding, I was like pretty disappointed actually with some of the Fox stuff, especially the gloves. Every single pair I've ever had of Fox gloves. Like not, I've had probably five to six pairs of Fox gloves. This will happen. The Velcro will come off. Ah. It won't stick anymore. And it's done. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I mean, the, the gloves are fine or whatever. They feel good, comfortable, fit well. But this Velcro sucks. Like, I, I, they need to do something about it. Because their gloves are just as expensive as anyone else's. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's just ridiculous. So as of right now, I will never buy Fox again. So um, I went to Mammoth last year. And I got my first pair of Troy gloves. Um, these ones right here mm -hmm. and they've worked amazing. I've loved them. The Velcro is still on there 100% perfectly. I even bought another pair of uh, air, the, uh, the Troy Lee air gloves and uh, they work awesome. Um, honestly, I think if I had to choose a brand who really has all around good stuff in mountain bike riding that doesn't cut corners, um, I feel like Troy Lee has the monopoly in some ways on yeah all around good stuff it's pricey though it's pricey um but worth it but worth it you know um even their helmets like you know their helmets are rad mm -hmm. you know and the gloves are rad you know the pants are rad you know um, but i haven't tried their, their pads knee pads yet but i've thought about it but um but I, I, troy lee is just a great brand mm -hmm. And hand up gloves, I think I've never tried them, but from if I think I know what hand up gloves are, the only thing cool about hand up gloves is that we can customize them as bound bikers. And if I had some hand up gloves and I had my logo on it, I'd be like, "You yeah, got hand up gloves!" But since I don't, I mean, I think they're really just flimsy, aren't they? Like cheap. They're they're no, they're really comfy. They're like they're lightweight, so but oh, they so break easy. Uh, I don't know. I ha I have the same pair. I have a pair of uh, I have like the BXC hand up gloves. I have a pair of the cold weather hand ups. So yeah, I guess I only have well, I only have two gloves total because that's all I need. Um, but the way I've been just wearing these uh, Fox ones, I don't even know what they are. They're super lightweight. Uh, I've been looking for actually a good pair of uh, that has like knuckle protection. Um, cause I've been riding a lot of park this summer, uh -huh. uh, but I like the ones that have like the little gel pads, like on, on the contour of your, uh, that, that's your... what I'm saying. That, that, that's that type of stuff. Because when I go down, I go down on my hands, mm -hmm. I feel like hand up gloves don't have that support, you know? And that's very important. I feel like, you know, for me, yeah. they're, they're pretty lightweight. I have actually, I've, my BKXC gloves are pretty gross because they're like light blue and they're like, but they're completely dirty all the time. They're like stained with dirt. Yeah. Um, but I actually just have like a ton of specialized gloves because uh, I met a guy that works in a shop in Bend, Oregon, and he's missing his left hand. So we share, we send each other gloves. Yeah, <laughs> he sends awesome. me all his left hand gloves, and I send him all my right hand gloves. Right. So he's so he's missing his left hand. Yeah, and I'm but missing my right. So we just we glove exchange it, and he has like, for some reason, he has tons of specialized gloves. I guess with the, that's what their shop carries. Yeah. So I have like a lifetime supply of gloves. I just want I I just need to get one pair that has really good knuckle protection, maybe plated. I know the Troy Lee ones have have some uh, protection on the knuckles 
Dude, that's cr that is so funny because I didn't even think about that. Like you wear that's one, awesome. glove. like that's it, just one glove. Well, every time, yeah, every time I would buy a pair of gloves, I feel like I'm wasting half my money. Like I don't. Oh, no, dude, I'm glad yeah. you found that guy because that's true. That's really yeah, cool. it's pretty nice. That's really cool, man. That's an awesome story, by the way. And I and it, and I, you know, that's why I, I would love to talk to like Tasco or Hand Up. I reached out to them a while ago when I was a lot smaller. Maybe I should do it again because I was gonna make some hilarious. Uh, you have to do a minimum run of like 250 pairs, mm -hmm. I think, with, with hand up. I don't know what Tasco is, but I thought it would be hilarious to make some no front brakes gloves where like the right hand glove is just a big X or like it says nope or something. I thought dude, that would, be, that would be awesome, dude, if you could do something like that, you know, for you. Yeah. That'd be so sweet, dude. Yeah, I, that's awesome. Um, now, uh, where are we now? So are we at with shoot? I think we're on shoes. We're on shoes now. Um, yeah, because we went from socks, went from shoes, went from lycra. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so why don't you talk about your shoes, man? Yeah. Uh, so I was a five ten person for a long time. Uh, I've had the free riders and the free rider pros. Um, so, but now. I made the switch, and these are really dirty from a muddy race that I was in the other week. But I ride Giro jackets, mm -hmm. and they, they're so like my one gripe. I like five tens are super durable, of course, and they're awesome. And the the that rubber compound uh, is really nice, but. I feel like I'm wearing 90 skate shoes whenever I wear 510s. You know what I mean? They just feel like, you know, you remember how like all those mid 90 skate shoes were like super wide. Yeah, like me. I used to wear all those. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but they're not as wide, so that's good. No, no, they're not as bad. But these are like pretty narrow. Like they're incredibly muddy and I'm probably going to have to vacuum in here, but they're like super low profile and I love them. So on that, I do the 510 uh, free rider shoe. I love mm -hmm. them. Um, I really like them. Uh, I actually kind of feel a little bit at home because of the 90 skaters thing. But um, and I like that they are thinner because um, if they were too fat, I couldn't do it. I, you know, I, I the whole fat 90s. I, I kind of I'm tired of it. I hate it. You know, I think it looks stupid looking back. You're like, oh my gosh, how did I wear those? So they they are. They're not like that. Yeah, they're not as bad. But um, but I mean, I tend to like them. Uh, I, I, there's been other stuff I've been wanting to try lately, but this is really worked for me. I really like the, I get the Kevlar ones. They're not Kevlar, but they're I forgot what this certain type of, uh, it's like the heavier duty stuff. So it's like, I can hit myself. I can hit mm -hmm. this. It's just really a heavy duty shoe. And it just, this material just does not fray or anything. And so it just, it does very well. Um, my, I wish I had my other free riders to show you, but I actually tore through the bottom of the shoe of my mm -hmm. other free riders before any of the outside looked bad so, yeah so that that was kind of cool now, and that rubber is super durable i don't know if you know this but like uh probably like five or six years ago adidas bought 510 oh, and they wow. bought them specifically because of that rubber compound that they use on their soles oh wow and, and so that's, that's why you can't buy the shoes off of the 510 site anymore you have to buy them i mean you can buy them off of amazon but they're on the adidas site for sale Really? I he just owns them. No idea about that. Yep. I've always wanted to wear Adidas when I was in middle school. Yeah. Now I am, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I have for my clipless shoes, I have the five ten Rostov impact shoes. So these are the stealth they're they're like they're called M sixteen, I guess. That's the model. So Wait, those are the ones that are clipless? Yeah. And I like these, and I like clip riding clipless more because I get less foot fatigue. Um, it's more the whole bottom is stiffer, I think, because there's a thick layer of plastic or something like that in there. It stops you from bending them. Mm -hmm. So, um, but my I left my clipless uh, pedals um, at the trail one day because I took them off to try some other pedals and uh -oh. lost them. So I haven't worn these in a while. So I'm kind of sad. But since I'm learning to jump out here in Texas, that's okay. So, um, yeah, I need to bail. Yeah, I need to bail. I need to not fail. And uh, this is kind of nice here. It's really tough right here. So yeah, that, I wear five ten, and I, I really enjoy five ten. Um, 
Do they look the best? No, but do they work? And can you find them for great prices on Amazon? Yes, you can. <laughs> so that's kind of, that's, that's what I do for shoes. Now, that would be all the clothing, I think. Yeah, that's all, that's all I got. So on that, have you seen the new Oakley mountain bike helmet? No, I haven't. It looks amazing. And I am, and I know it's going to be pricey because it's Oakley, but I, I've always been a fan of Oakley growing up. As a kid, my dad and all his, you know, and all his, uh, you know, friends used to wear Oakleys. And so as a kid, I'd grow up going, oh, I want Oakleys, so I want Oakleys. So I have this weird little, like, like love for the brand, I guess, you know. But mm -hmm. when I saw their uh, mountain bike helmet, I, it looked like probably one of the nicest mountain bike helmets I've seen so far. Yeah. And I would say rivaling Smith. They had a very yeah. high profile, aggressive look. Um, and I'm really excited to see what, what it's going to go for because I would love to move to Oakley if I could. Um, I'm hoping Oakley gets more serious in the mountain biking industry because I really believe that they have a – they take things seriously. So I'm looking for their helmets now. Is, is it – there's it's still – it's not out yet? No, it's not out yet. Um, I believe GMBN and uh, just did a, they, GMBN did a video where they went to the Oakley factory. That's how I found out about it. So you can put like GMBN, like Oakley or something like that. Um, and it should, it should pop up. Um, let me see. So, hey guys, do you guys have any questions? Let us know in the comments, like, what's your favorite gear? I want to know what your favorite helmet is. I want to know what your favorite pads are. I want everybody to know what you guys like. Um, it's it's very important to me to uh, get every, the community involved and less sharing information so that we could, you know, all learn and stuff like that. So definitely, guys, leave a comment um, in the uh, comment section about what you guys like to wear. Um, again, I just want to make it known that – Patreon guys, if you guys want stickers, I got stickers where my stickers go. I'll be sending stickers out for Patreon signups um, for the, you know, and stuff like that. So get those going, get them on your bike, get them rolling. Woo! Um, I also have this one that you guys are going to get too. And along with three other secret ones that you're going to get. So blah. Um, I don't know. And also, I know No From Breaks has merch and he has a, do you have your jerseys for sale, dude? Because your jerseys are awesome. No, they they were like, uh, I, I get them made uh by podium wear which is like i think it's who brian makes his jerseys with but you have to do them like like a team order so it'll be open for a month and then they ship them all out so i'll probably do that in another couple months i'll i'll sell that it's like a three-quarter length jersey you should yeah. do it too they're pretty awesome they're uh they actually did the design for me i sent them my logo and a whole bunch of stuff and they came up with the design oh my gosh dude so pretty legit and did they come up with the design for free or how did that work yeah yeah like i i sent them uh my logo and a couple like um uh, like my brake lever thing too and the, okay. the armadillo one and they were like i was like yeah i like i like really big stuff and they they were like okay what do you think about this and i'm like let's do it and they opened the order and yeah. So they, they were yeah. cool with just making one for you? Would they do that? For oh, no, no. They, so, like, I had it open for a month. So, I think I sold, like, 10. And they're, like, team jerseys. So, I don't get any money or anything from it. But, I mean, it's cool to just have a jersey with your own thing on. So, there were, like, 10, 10 jerseys. So, you didn't get any money. But they, no. But they designed a jersey for you. But it's cool. But it's, yeah, but it's your logo on, a, like, a really nice three-quarter length jersey. So, I want to do it now that I know that it's easy like that, but it's like, how do I keep it going for people who want stuff for the future? Oh, uh, you you have to do it. You just have to open a window, maybe do an do an order of them every like three to four months or six months or whatever. Well, I could I could order from them like ten or something. Well, no, they drop ship it. So you just say, "Here's my jersey design." Like they make your jersey design, then you say, "I'm gonna open my store from." So like I did June 1st through June 31st and I had it open for that entire month and anybody that wanted a jersey would order it and then at the end of the month they close the orders they make the jerseys and they send them out. So So how much did uh how much did your scots? They're like 50 55 bucks. Yeah, that's pretty rad. Yeah, they're they're really nice. Brian got one and uh like Jordan Byron and a whole bunch of other local guys here picked them up. I'm going to I'll do another order, but there's also Teespring 
Uh, I have some stuff there, and I have a Patreon too, and all of that. So, yeah. I'm, oh yeah, and yeah, Eric has Patreon as well, guys. So yeah, I'm more than happy just to have people watch my videos. Yeah, honestly. I mean, yeah, it's um, but you know, we we put a lot. I know Eric puts a lot of work into this. We put a lot of work into it. You know what I mean? So it's like you know, it really to keep us going. We got camera gear. We got all kinds of other stuff. And we got families to take care of. So it, you know, all that stuff goes to helping us continue to do what we love doing and bringing you guys videos. So Use those affiliate links, he's got a bunch of worldwide cyclery dim ones down there. Yeah, please do guys. The affiliate links help a ton. All right guys. So I think we're going to get going. I want to thank everybody for watching. You guys have been hanging out. It's been cool. Um, I got a cool little thumbnail. I got to optimize this video <laughs> and I still got like a lot of stuff to do now to, for this video to hopefully get it seen and stuff like that. And so we can drive people over and, you know, me and, uh, you know, hopefully blow our channels up so we can go travel the world, you know, like be like BKC one day. And we need a ride soon. <laughs> yes. I'm in Texas now. Still going to California every few months. I got nine videos from California coming out, guys, like of like trails and air done for. It's going to be sick. I demoed the SB100 and the SB150. So those are coming out too. So um, I almost peed my pants. I couldn't believe how much I love the SB150, but it was amazing. Um, I'm crying now. Um, all right, guys. So we're, we're going to be seeing you guys soon. It's Tony that to be dropping. This is Eric No Fun Breaks. Stay strong and keep pedaling. What do you, what's your slogan? Stay shreddy. Stay shreddy. Just Say it. The camera. Stay shreddy. But like, but like, be like, stay shreddy. Uh, I usually do stay shreddy and then there's a fist bump noise. All right. So <laughs> say it, do it again and do the fist bump. Until next time, stay shreddy. Cool. There we go. All right, guys, we out. Later.